What is with all the gluten sensitivity? We never heard gluten intolerant or celiac disease when we were kids. Now, gluten issues are everywhere. What's going on? It's probably not so much changes in wheat. Some blame an obscure little enzyme in processed foods, microbial transglutaminase, or MTG. They call it meat glue or food glue because it can glue together scraps of fish, chicken, and meat into whole looking cuts. It can make yogurt firmer, it extends the shelf life of processed foods, improves texture, especially in low salt and low fat products, and makes bread and pastries, particularly gluten-free ones, rise better. So what's the worry? MTG mimics our body's own tissue transglutaminase, which is a key trigger in celiac disease. Together, they form new protein complexes that trigger immune responses, increase leaky gut, and sensitize people to gluten. Most people with gluten sensitivity can tolerate some gluten, but MTG seems to drop the threshold, fueling an increase in celiac and autoimmunity. Something's causing gluten problems in numbers we've never seen before, and I'm not hearing a lot of good answers. Could MTG be part of that? Now, we get MTG from some plants and vegetables, even probiotics, and they don't cause harm. But the increased amounts we're getting from the surge of processed foods has some scientists worried. They're suggesting this higher MTG presence is pushing some prone individuals over the top into a full-blown immune response that we call celiac disease. And it's miserable, absolutely miserable. Ajin Moto, the Japanese developer and the dominant producer of MTG under the brand name Activa, declared it as grass, generally recognized as safe 27 years ago. And they've gradually put it in more and more food types over the years by just self-affirming its safety. Now, as part of that process, they conducted a toxicity study on dogs. Beagles, according to their own documents, turned up lower prostate gland weights, a pituitary gland cyst, discoloration of the lungs, and an enlarged uterus. Yet, they reported to the FDA that all levels of dietary exposure to MTG, well tolerated, and no treatment-related adverse effects were observed, close quote. Here's what really bothers me. Most of the time when it's used, you can't tell it's in your food. The manufacturer simply declares it as non-functional in the final product or in trace amounts as a processing aid. And presto changeo, they don't have to list it in the ingredients like other food additives, except on meat. So we have no idea how much we're getting. This is another example why processed food should not be the majority of what you eat. It's hard to tell where the chemicals end and the food begins. So is MTG the gluten crisis culprit? More research is definitely needed, but we deserve to know right now if it's in what we're eating. If you have an issue with it, how can you avoid it? This gluten intolerance is getting, well, intolerable.